Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing an unboxing. Some of these have been sitting for a while. <laughs> I, I, I like doing these accumulation unboxings versus the individual unboxings. I like these way better because I can just get a batch done and then you guys can just pick which ones you want to watch. And yeah, I like these doing these way better. <laughs> I know some people don't, but yeah, we're gonna do it this way because this is more fun for me. Uh, and that's pretty much what this channel is about, is doing things that I like. <laughs> Except for the Wheel of No Appeal, which I did spin and I don't want to read the book. Shocker. It's literally called the Wheel of No Appeal for a reason, but I spun it like a month ago and I still haven't started the book, so I really need to do that. But anyway, we're gonna be doing an unboxing. We have a... I do it every time. I do it every time. I unbox the book only and then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do that in a book box. And so yeah, I, I have an unbox Freelu adult book. I have a Alcrate adult book. I have an Alcrate young adult box. And then I have an Illumicrate box. So we're gonna get right into the book only first. So first up, we actually have the already unboxed Fairy Loot. I don't, what is this? This is October, it is October. That's impressive, okay? I didn't think, <laughs> I thought it was like a whole month behind, but I am actually not surprisingly, at least on some of these. So October 2023, we have My Dear Nemesis. I love that. And I feel like everyone's seen this already. It is so pretty. Here is the author letter with the artwork on the back. Why do I have Kylo Ren vibes from that? I just saw that. I feel like he looks like Kylo Ren a little bit. I don't remember what the actor's name is, but he looks kind of like that. And then there's the actual author letter if you wanna pause and read it. And then we have the actual book, which I'm so excited about. <laughs> so there is the book. The original cover is beautiful, but this is stunning. This is, this is, yeah, this is perfection. This is so pretty. The colors are beautiful. I love the people on it. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people who's like iffy on if I like people on covers, but this is the perfect type of artwork for people on the covers. And yeah, the Hurricane Wars, just, it's just so pretty. And then we have the side, which looks, it's just good. <laughs> it's just good. And I love these thick books because you can do so much cool stuff with uh, the sprayed edges. This is what I want from sprayed edges. I know we've talked about it a million times before, but I hate when they just take something from the front and put on the side, which they kind of did, but they tweaked it enough. It's almost like they took one of these things and put it on the side, but there's, it's not a direct, like they didn't directly take it from the front. Like she isn't on the side or he isn't on the side. It is a nice gorgeous scene and it is very pretty. I really like how these came out. And then on the top, just purple and the bottom, just purple. Nothing on the back of the dust jacket. We have, this is one of those books that is like, how am I going to display it? How am I going to display it? Because this is also very pretty. And I like that they went with like a matte. It looks really, really good. And the foiling is coming off like super bright. And the side even looks good. That even looks really good. And then we have the bag. It's just, this is so well done. And then when we open it up, we have more foiling. And just, this artwork is so pretty. Something about it reminds me of that scene in Tangled. It's nothing like it. It's nothing like it. But it does look kind of like that scene in Tangled. And then we have the signature page. And then I believe the back was different. Yeah, the back is the guy. I don't like how he looks as much on the back. I do like this. I don't like him as much on the back, but it's still really pretty. Okay, so because I only have four books, we're going to very, very quickly go through the plot of this. Callison was left on the steps of a Sardovian orphanage as a baby. All she has ever known is the Hurricane Wars, as her people fight for freedom from the tyranny of the Night Emperor Gahiris, but are they truly her people? Callison dreams of one day finding where she comes from, her family and the source of the magic that flows through her veins like sunlight. Alaric of House Ossinast, master of the Shadowforge Legion and Gaharis' only son and heir, has been honed into a weapon by his father. Tasked with obliterating the neighboring Sardovian Alfold, Alaric focuses on only one goal, extinguish all threats to the Night Empire, with his armies and his stormships and his shadow magic. That is, until he sees Taliesin burning brightly on the battlefield with the same light magic that slew his grandfather, turned his father into a monster, and ignited the decade-long Hurricane Wars. 
He tries and fails to kill her, something about her making him pause, allowing his now greatest enemy to slip through his fingers. But a new horror emerges from across the Eversea, one that promises to cause even more devastation than the Hurricane Wars. Only Talson and Alaric can stop it. Will these mortal foes be able to come together, or will they end up destroying each other and dooming their world in the process? There's something about that is very Darkling and Elena, because I mean, it's like darkness and light and enemies. And this seems like a potentially true enemies to lovers kind of story, or enemies to they kill each other, because I didn't see anything about a romance really happening, but I assume from the imagery that it's gonna be a romance. But this is really cool. I'm really excited to read this one. I know this is a pretty big, exciting release for a lot of people. On the spoiler card, we have the Fairy Lou exclusive edition. It has an exclusive redesigned cover by After Blossom underscore art, digital spray to edges by After Blossom underscore art. Uh, foil on the hardcover by Blanca Design, and then the aid end papers are also after Blossom underscore art, digital signature, and bonus content. There's bonus content. Yeah, so there is a bonus chapter at the very end for Fairy Loot, which is really, really cool. I love when book boxes do that because I feel like you're getting something extra special when there's like a little extra thing just for subscribers. All right, box one done. We are moving on to the Alcrate adult box, which I know <laughs> I have already seen. I did open and check it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy about it. So we have the Alcrate adult box. I'm loving these purple adult boxes and the new blue young adult boxes. They're so pretty. So we have this and it is the Monsters Among Us. I like the new design. It's not, it's killing me with my ring light, but it's like this glossy paper and it's really nice. And then this is very fancy on my back. We'll go over the back at the end because they do have a lot on there. And we have the book, which is pretty much exactly the same size as the um, box. So I actually had to tip it over. <laughs> so the book for Alcrates, I think it's October. October adult fantasy book is The Starling House. The colors, the colors are so pretty. I purposely did not get the book of the month one because book of the month was, did do The Starling House, but I knew it was coming in this one coming in another book box next month. I don't remember if it is or not, but that's so pretty. That is so pretty. I love the color scheme. It's gorgeous. And then we have, this very much reminds me of Ninth House on the side. There's something very Ninth House about it. And then the back is, I dream sometimes about a house I've never seen. It's so pretty. And then we also have a ribbon bookmark. And then we just have, see, with Alcrate, I actually prefer them doing just regular sprayed edges because I like this format of book better. I know we've talked about it. I don't like the squared off editions that the United States has to do if they want digitally sprayed edges. I just don't like them. I don't like how they feel. I'm not a fan of them. So I like when Alcrate just does the sprayed edges. So, and they match my other books. That's the thing, like all the little like squared off ones, they don't match my other books. They only match each other and it drives me nuts. So gorgeous, just simple, plain sprayed edges. It's like this like purpley blue color, but it matches the front so well. I'm a huge fan of this. So when we open it up, we do have stuff under the dust jacket. We have some artwork. Okay, this is what I talk about when I say I'm not a fan of people on covers. I don't like this style of art. It looks funky, so I'm not a fan of the artwork under here, unfortunately. But I'm sure a lot of people will like it. It's just, I, art is so subjective. This is just not my art style that I like. And then under the dust jacket, we have, I wanna say gold foil, but it's not gold foil. <laughs> but it's very pretty. This is the story of Starling House. And on the back, every sin comes home to roost. I like it. This is, I think this is gothic, right? This is a gothic story on the inside. This is artwork I like. See, I like this like, I don't know what you even call it. It's very rough, rough hewn sketches almost. Like they look rougher, they don't look as polished. They look almost like watercolor. It's so pretty though. I don't know much about art, so if I'm saying something weird, it's because I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, author letter and the signature. I love the book boxes that are putting the author letter in the books. I love it. Oh, see, I love that art style. I don't know what it is. I absolutely love this art style. And there's gold foiling. I miss the gold foiling. 
Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm so excited about that. All right, so this book is Modern Gothic Fantasy. I dream sometimes about a house I've never seen. Opal is a lot of things, orphan, high school dropout, full-time cynic, and part-time cashier. But above all, she's determined to find a better life for her younger brother, Jasper. One that gets them out of Eden, Kentucky, a town remarkable for only two things, bad luck and E. Starling, the reclusive 19th century author of The Underland, who disappeared over a hundred years ago. All she left behind were dark rumors and her home. Everyone agrees that it's best to ignore the uncanny mansion and its myth misanthropic heir, Arthur. Almost everyone, anyway. I should be scared, but in the dream, I don't hesitate. Opal has been obsessed with The Underland since she was a child. When she gets the chance to step inside Starling House, and make some extra cash for her brother's escape fund she can't resist. But sinister forces are digging deeper into the buried secrets of Starling House, and Arthur's own nightmares have become far too real. As Eden itself seems to be drowning in its own ghost, Opal realizes that she might finally have found a reason to stick around. In my dream, I'm home, and now she'll have to fight. Welcome to Starling House. Enter if you dare. Again, love it. <laughs> This book sounds right up my alley. This is gorgeous. I, so far we're two for two with me loving the redesigns of the books. Cause sometimes when they redesign books, I'm a little like, uh, I don't know if I actually like this, but this is gorgeous. I do like the original, but this is like, there's something very beautiful and Gothic and whimsical about it that I actually love. All right, so on the back, we do have what the original looks like versus the new one. The new one is far superior. <laughs> far superior it is so pretty the exclusive cover designed by Ra's daughter digital author signature page designed by divine literary sprayed edges reversible jacket illustrated by spook geist foil hardcover divine literary foiled end pages illustrated by anta underscore arf author letter bound into the book bonus content bound into the book and a ribbon bookmark i don't know what the bonus content is but i'm excited about it i can't like it doesn't it, it wasn't like a luma crate where it was like bonus content chapter so we're gonna see i'm gonna have to see what's different about this than the other version this is book box number two down and now we are moving on to the bigger ones with the actual items so they do take a little bit longer but we are moving on to the owl crate i believe it's still october book box so let's open that one up all right little sneak peek we have at first i thought that was a blanket but i do not think that is a blanket the material looks not right for a blanket but it could be that might be a blanket oh the tassels that might be a scarf actually okay let's put this aside this is the spoiler card alcrate october young adult power has a price and the first thing we have is a scarf <laughs> say might as well get the pretty big item out of the way first we have a alcrate bluely boo bluely blue is amazing <laughs> i have a fourth wing dust jacket by them and it's like a prized possession it is so pretty i still haven't put it on one of my books because i'm so nervous i'm gonna like crease it wrong that i'm just like no <laughs> like it's still just sitting in a corner with me looking at it okay so this is the fox and the prince scarf inspired by once upon a broken heart designed with love by bluely boo such cute little artwork on the front so let's open this up it feels pretty soft i was worried when i looked at it just in the box that it wasn't going to be soft but this is actually pretty soft and it's going to be warm it's going to be nice and warm i don't know about the design though <laughs> Let's see. Okay, you can see the archer print. Is this supposed to be an apple? I don't know if that's supposed to be an apple. Hmm. I feel like I can't make out a lot of what's actually on the design, which I know it's hard. I, I crochet, uh, so it can be really hard making designs. And this is obviously, I believe this is knit. I don't know if it's hand knit. That would take a very long time. Uh, but you can see the little hearts. I mean, I still like it. And it, it is a little scratchy, but it's going to be nice and warm for winter, which I live in a place where it doesn't get very cold, but I'm still pretty excited about it. It's, it's, it's nice. It's a nice item. I do wish it was more obvious, like I could tell more or we had a different item just for this specific fandom, just because I'm a huge fan of this fandom. Uh, but it is nice and it's, it's pretty big. So I'm excited about that. Next, we have the monthly pin, Treasured Tomes. This is 10 of 12. It's going to be Howl's Moving Castle. I do like Howl's Moving Castle based solely on the American uh, dubbed version of the movie. So I can't say if I actually like the book because <laughs> I have not read it. Here is, oh, this is nice. This is pretty, that's pretty like spot on it. And I can see Calcifer right here. 
Ah, I love that calcifer is so big. Oh, that's fun. Is that Howl? Looks like Howl. I think we ought to live happily ever after. It's so cute. And again, love that calcifer is just like right there. Calcifer is my favorite. <laughs> I don't see any Sophie though, which is interesting. So that's interesting. But yeah, that one's really good. That one's really nice. Next we have sticker set, Synagard Academy, inspired by the Poppy War. I was like, why don't I recognize that? This is designed by Anne Guyanart. Oh, oh, okay. These are those like, they're translucent. Oh, they're so pretty. These, I love the idea of this, but these are gonna be so hard to like find places. I actually stick them so you can actually see them. Okay, so that is the first one. I've dropped this little thing like six times <laughs> trying to get these out. Oh gosh, there are a lot. Okay, Poppy, more Poppy. Ooh, we have a very pretty Phoenix. It looks like Moltres. <laughs> For any of the Pokemon fans out there, it looks exactly like Moltres, that's funny. And I don't even know if that was a phoenix. That could have just been like a firebird. Uh, we have a beautiful scene. That's pretty. I'm sticking them all over there, which is why you're seeing me like kind of duck out of frame because that way I can all see them and they don't disappear somewhere. A character. I don't know anything about the Poppy War, so I can't tell you anything <laughs> that's actually happening. Uh, we have a dragon. Very pretty. We have tea and books and what looks to be the moon and another character art oh and another one i almost missed this one and then a bow and arrow set with water also i'm sorry if you can hear my neighbor uh doing whatever he does it's every day <laughs> he either is power washing something he is uh i, I want to say blow drying it's not but leaf blowing he is doing his lawn he's doing something every day and i don't understand what he's doing because it's it's they don't have a yard like they killed all their grass so I, they can't be doing anything that much <laughs> so i'm assuming it's either leaf blowing because they're we do have big trees in front of our houses uh or he's power washing something he's constantly power washing something <laughs> so i am sorry if you can hear that but anyway those are the stickers that's a lot of stickers actually i really like that anytime you get stickers you really want to get like bang for your buck because it is a cheaper item but those are very very pretty very very pretty next item we have comes in a little box it says this is shift into the fall vibes with our nature of witches spoon rest okay this these are the types of items i love <laughs> i can never get enough of like kitchen stuff i just i love getting kitchen stuff because then i don't have to buy any of it myself like it comes in these boxes so yeah obviously i'm buying it but it's like a surprise. It's like, oh my gosh, kitchen stuff. I sound really weird. <laughs> I realized that. Okay, here is the spoon rest. I love it. This is perfect for November coming up. Oh, it's perfect. It says autumn is its own kind of magic. That's perfect. I love it. Yeah, very happy with that. Very, uh, very, very happy with that. Guys, I'm literally cackling right now because in the middle of filming, I had to stop because this just delivered <laughs> what are the odds what are the odds i'm gonna have to redo my thumbnail because i don't have this included in it i guess i can just like stick it up in the corner <laughs> be like hey this showed up late um yeah very excited about this so we're gonna get to this after i finish the elf crate box i am really really excited I haven't even checked it um yes <laughs> yes I'm very excited so like I was saying before the FedEx guy showed up, uh, I thought there was only four items in the Outcrate box, but there actually was also a chapstick, and it is Dragon Rider, obviously this is the fourth wing hype, Dragon Rider Snow Cream Spiced Latte Fiction Bath Company. I love getting chapsticks. I use chapstick all the time because my lips are always dry, if you haven't noticed from the videos, which now that I said it, I feel like you guys are going to look at it now and I'm going to be like, mm. Smells really good. Smells really, really good. As usual, it goes on very nice. <laughs> I feel like you didn't need that type of review, but I really want a chapstick in the moment, so I'm very excited about it. I'm gonna laugh if my lips start like breaking out because <laughs> I do have sensitive skin, but normally my lips are okay, but uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> anyway, so that is everything for the items in the box. Let's move on to the paper goods and the book. So we have the spoiler card for November right here. We'll go over this last. 
And then we have the little owl crate sheet that we will also look at because it does have uh, what the original looked like versus what we got. So we're gonna look at that also after we look at the book. Oh and yeah, my neighbor is leaf blowing. <laughs> and I feel kind of bad because it's our giant tree that is accounting for some of the leaves because they have they have two big trees on their yard as well. But my tree is kind of on the side of our house a little bit. Like it's definitely directly in front of our house, but it's so big that it's also over their driveway. Because <laughs> when we actually had them come in and uh, we had to have our trees trimmed last year. If you saw any of those videos around when that was happening, I was very unhappy about it because it's very expensive and it didn't need to be done. Our HOA just wanted everything to look uniform and it cost us like $3,000 and it was, I was so pissed off. I've never been that mad in my entire life. I swear this guy, <laughs> our neighbor drives me nuts. He, they're nice, they're nice, kind of. But we have an issue, sometimes I play really loud music. They haven't in like three weeks, thank goodness, because that's when my health stuff started. If I also had to deal with that uh, at night, I would be very unhappy. But they've been pretty good the last three weeks, so I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the apocalypse to happen <laughs> and them um, to start up again. But he's leaf blowing and he blowed some of it into our yard. I can't really complain, it's coming from archery, so whatever, it's still kind of rude, but I'm not gonna say anything, it's archery, I'll clean it up. Um, but he just blew the rest of his leaves across the street into the neighbor's yard across the street. Who does that? <laughs> like that's like it's just in their driveway now. That lady's gonna be so mad because she's she's a nurse and she's got two little boys uh, that she takes care of, care of and she does not have time <laughs> to deal with that. So she's gonna come home and be pissed off about that. But anyway, that's that's kind of the story of the neighbor. I feel like I didn't really have that. It wasn't a very good story, but I just couldn't believe he was like blowing it into every other person's yard. He's not raking or anything. He's just leaf blowing it into everyone else's yard. So that's very fun. So anyway, I have unwrapped the book and let's look at the book. This Dark Descent. Hmm. I don't think I like it. <laughs> I do know what the original looks like and I really like the original. So I don't know about this. It also is the boxed off edge. However, it's a normal height. So I like that. This is an adult book. That is about young adult height, I think, because adult books are always taller. I think this is okay. I think this would match other books. So that makes me happy. I just, I also just don't like how they're formatted. I know it's very picky, but I just don't like how the spine looks. I also really don't like these frayed edges. Uh, this is bad. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was not expecting to really not like this at all. This Dark Descent and the back is Promise Me You Will Be Fearless. Just kind of boring. I don't see much going on in that. I'm trying to see. Yeah, there's like, there's like supposed to be an image underneath, but it's so dark you can't see it. Um, and then the sprayed edges. I don't think they look good, or the digital edges. I, I don't like them. Even if this was like a regular formatted book, I would be very not happy with these. They look bad. They look so weird. I do not like. I don't think they look good. It looks like they bled. It looks like the the digital wasn't like done correctly because like look at that. The edges are so blurry for these things. I do not like this. Um, under the dust jacket we do have some artwork. So we have, oh that's cute. Still not a fan of this type of artwork. I don't know what it is kind of freaking me out a little bit. <laughs> this very much reminds me of the artwork under the dust jacket for the last one that we just looked at. It's just, again, not my type of art style. Not a big fan of that. This is so disappointing. <laughs> and then under that we have, do not be afraid of your own power, embrace it. There's a lot going on. It's fine. That's fine. I'm just disappointed now because I didn't like the rest of the book. The Stark Descent. And then the back. The Illineer for Enderlane for the Harbingers for Sendia. 
Four races, one winner, a hundred riders. Witness the spectacle and thrills of Illinier. I'm concerned because I'm now worried there's gonna be a lot of animal deaths. <laughs> oh, but I also like competition things, so I'm just like, now I'm, I'm concerned. I'm very concerned. Okay, uh, we have artwork. I don't know how I feel about it. It just reminds me again of, of it's not the style that I really particularly like. It's, it's pretty. I like the landscape look. I just don't like how the people look. And then the back artwork. I do like the back a little bit more. It's a little dark. It actually looks brighter on camera, so that's nice. I can actually see it better than uh, with my own eyes. Still, I don't really like the people, but I do like this one better than the other one because it's more, it's more like rough sketched a little bit. Guys, I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm so sad that I don't like this. And then we have the author letter and the signature. Ugh, man. I'm like just not happy. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what this book is about. And you can probably really hear that uh, leaf blower. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm gonna try and post edit to get rid of it, but my, my editing software is not like the best. So I don't have high hopes for that happening. So I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just, if you want, you can mute me and just like look at the pretty things. <laughs> Let the race begin. The Russell family is famous throughout Enderlane as breeders of enchanted horses, but their prestige is no match for their rising debts. To save her family's ranch, Makira Russell is left with only one option. Enter the Elanir, a treacherous cross-country horse race known as much for a tie body count as its enticing prize money. To have any chance of success, Makira will have to recruit Arielle Kadar, a talented but unlicensed enchanter who creates golems in place of enchanted animals. And Damien Adair, a dashing young lord in the midst of a fierce succession battle, both have mysterious reasons of their own to help Makira as well as their own blood feuds to avenge. Steeped in Jewish folklore, this dark descent is a spellbinding new fantasy full of intrigue, romance, and pulse-pounding action. In a world as dangerous as this, will hidden agendas and conflicting desires butcher Makira a Ari and Damien's chances of winning the Illinear or will another rider's dagger. Oh, I am concerned. <laughs> I am concerned. I know a lot of people are, I've gotten some comments about why do you tell, care about animals more than people? And it's just like, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> but when animals die, there's just like something that really freaks me out. It's like the innocence of animals. It's like the same thing as children. I don't read things that I know like children are going to die and I don't like it. So when animals die, things that really freaks me out. So I'm like, you know horses are going to die in this. Like it's very obvious there are going to be some horses that die in this. So I'm kind of freaked out about that. I do like that she's going to have a, a golem instead of a horse, potentially is what it sounds like. So I do like that, just in case something happens. Uh, but I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Now at least I understand all the horse imagery. There's so many horse imagery. I'm not a horse girly though. I, just, I feel like it's gonna make a lot of people mad. I don't really care one way or another about horses. I know they're like very popular, but I didn't grow up around them. I, I did live across horse fields when I was at Virginia Tech where my apartment complex was. So I liked looking at them from afar, but I don't feel about them anyway. <laughs> but for horse girlies, they're either gonna really like this or not, because there could be a ton of horse deaths and that's very traumatizing for them. But uh, they could also like it because it's gonna be a lot about horses. But anyway, I don't know how I got off on horses so badly, but let's talk about the spoiler card. First, we're actually gonna look at what the original looks like, which I too already know and I do, I like better, but I actually think the Alcrate version makes more sense. Like there is a horse on the front of the old cover, but I do feel like this makes more sense. Oh man, my nails are nasty. Don't look at those. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I, but I, I like this better. I think this looks so much better than this. That's disappointing. Spoiler card. We have the Ceramic Spoon Rest, which is inspired by the nature of witches by Sel Chani. Cozy up with our once upon a broken heart. Uh, scarf by Blue Lee Boo. Dragon Rider Lip Balm, inspired by Priory of the Orange Tree. Okay. I'm just gonna pretend it's fourth wing. It looks more fourth wing to me. <laughs> Created with love by Fiction Bath Company. Cinegard Academy sticker set, Poppy War by Anne Guy and Art. Treasured Tomes, of course, designed by Noah Designs, Howl's Moving Castle. And then our book. The signed edition features a gorgeous redesigned exclusive cover by Anta underscore Arf, 
turn it over to view the reversible dust jacket with artwork by rhymes.y wonderful stenciled edges by carmen at dm design Beneath the dust jacket, we have Divine Literary created the foil hardcover design. Boot Geist did the exclusive end pages and a designed signature page by Divine Literary. Finally, an author letter and a bonus chapter at the end bound into the book. All this bonus content. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving all the bonus content. Okay, that is that. And then next month, uh, we will have the planner. That's, yeah, that's pretty normal. So... We are two for three <laughs> with the books. I like the box though. I, everything, I'm gonna use everything in the box. I like it. I do not like the redesign of the book pretty much at all. I don't like anything about it. And I don't even know if I like the book, <laughs> the idea of the book. So that was a bust. That was a bust for that one, which is really sad. Uh, but we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on and we're gonna go to the Evernight box. All right, so here is the ever night box I do know what the original cover looks like and it's just a generic kind of like it's like just people sitting in a room um so I'm curious what they did for it because with silver nitrate they literally just changed it from red to silver so I don't know what they're gonna do with this one so we have the spoiler card on the front upside down ever night October 23 and some stuff on the back about it. And then lots of things. Man, you can't see anything. Okay, I'm just gonna... That is very different. That is very, very different. <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> I'm having, I'm, I'm struggling opening this up. I'm struggling opening this up. Okay, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> Last to leave the room. Um, <laughs> I feel a little cursed having this in the house. Um, That's actually horrifying. That's actually horrifying. Uh, black on the top, black on the bottom, and this horrifying conglomeration in there. Um, <laughs> oh, we have a signed book plate. Okay, so under the dust jacket, we just have that. I do like that. I kind of wish this was on the front. I think that would have looked really cool on the front. And then under the cover, I don't like this artwork either. I actually like everything but the person. This is, this is... I'm just very picky when it comes to people art because yeah if you took her out I like everything else and you like I don't even think you needed her there <laughs> and then on the back oh okay I get it I get it now why she's there because you know that's creepy <laughs> okay I mean I'm pretty excited about this book I do know what this one is about already kind of but I'm also nervous because The Death of Jane Lawrence is also by this author, and I DNF that one. Okay, let's talk about what this is about. I'm so confused, because, like, the original artwork makes sense, because it's them, like, in a room. Uh, I don't, I don't know how this would make sense. Well, I guess it's, oh, it's just, like, split personality things going on, like, a good side and a bad side kind of thing. The city of San Sirocco is sinking. The basement belonging to Dr. Tamsin Rivers, the arrogant, selfish head of the research team assigned to find the source of the substance, is sinking faster. As Tamsin grows obsessed with the distorting dimensions of the room at the bottom of the stairs, she finds a door that didn't exist before. And one night, it opens to reveal an exact physical copy of her. This doppelganger is sweet and biddable, where Tamsin is calculating and cruel. It appears fully, terribly human, passing every test Tamsin can devise. But the longer the double exists, the more Tamsin begins to forget pieces of her life, to lose track of time, to grow terrified of the outside world. With her employer growing increasingly suspicious, Tamsin must try to hold herself together long enough to figure out what her double wants from her, and just where the mysterious door leads to. This sounds really cool, and th that does make more sense, and it's kind of like something hidden behind like the main person. I like that. That sounds kind of cool. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. This one sounds really neat. And I do like that. I think that looks really good. So I'll just have to like hide the cover. <laughs> to hide the cover. And that looks good. This looks fine. Oh, so, the spoiler card talks about the plot. And then we have 
The Evernight Exclusive Edition features redesigned cover by Baroque Gothic, design by Cover Dungeon Rabbit, and paper artwork by Dev Frost, different front and back, foil design on the case by Baroque Gothic, digitally printed edges by Baroque Gothic, and a signed book plate. Yeah, I love that we ended up getting an Evernight in the middle of this uh, book unboxing. That worked out really, really well. So now we're moving on to the last box, and that is the Young Adult Illumicrate. I don't know if this is... What was last month? September? I don't know if this is September or October. I'm, I've am i lost complete track of what I've, what I've gotten. So uh, I, I assume it's probably September because I've had it for a while. So this is, this is October. They delivered so early. I feel bad about saying like how bad they are <laughs> about delivering. Uh, Fairy Tale Force, I guess they have the US distribution site. They've had it for a while though and I still was getting them late, but it's definitely better now. So obviously they're getting them out on time better. So Fairytale Forest, October 2023, spoiler card. Uh, let's start with the first thing, which is super heavy. It is a The Otherworld desk mat based on The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. I loved that book. I thought that book was so good. Uh, very trippy, <laughs> but really good. All right, and it's a big one too. Ugh. Oh, I can already tell I love this. This is so cool. I love desk mats. I have no idea where I'm going to put it, but I love it. Why does this look like, for some reason, I'm like, is this actually the Starling House? I literally just read what it was, but because it looks so much like the Starling House, I'm like, is it the Starling House? Oh, it looks so good. This is perfect. I love this. This is so pretty. I love the colors. I'm just trying to see if there's any, like, secret things hidden in here but I don't think there really are. So yeah first item desk mat really really like it love the aesthetic. Next item we have some things that I absolutely love even though I I don't use them that much I just use them randomly and hopefully these stick better than ones we get in book boxes a lot. We have some page tabs let me take them out because I, I can't see them with the stupid ring light. <laughs> All right page tabs very pretty I don't know if they're supposed to be a specific fandom or just fandom neutral like witchy things because it kind of looks like witchy things um they're very vibrant looking they're very pretty again i really hope that they stick really well that's always my biggest gripe but yeah we're gonna hope the material is different i thought it was just like paper material which is why i was concerned but it's more of like a like a plastic oh no <sighs> this one just popped right off oh i was opening it the wrong way i'm such an idiot Oh man, I'm such an idiot. I was trying to open it the other way. Okay, so let me just peel one of these off. They seem kind of sticky. Yeah, those are pretty good. It's sticking to me at least. So that's pretty good. That's I'm, I'm happy with that. So I think that's going to be fine. <sighs> I know what this next thing is. and I don't like getting these items. Okay, we have what is pretty, yeah, this is a replica sword. I don't like getting these. I know everyone else likes getting them, but I am not a fan. I just, I'm just, I don't know what to do with them. I don't, like, I don't display stuff like this, really. So I just, this is obviously the Cruel Prince, I feel like. So a lot of people are going to be very excited. I think it's the Cruel Prince, at least. We'll look at the spoilers, but it looks pretty close to what I think the Cruel Prince should look like. Yeah, replica sword. Okay, I found the heavy thing. This It's so heavy. It's so heavy. The trash truck is now coming down the street. It's a Monday. I don't know why I try to film on Mondays because everyone's doing stuff on Mondays. Okay, so the heavy item is for finding dreams that don't exist yet. This is definitely Once Upon a Broken Heart. This is kind of more what I was thinking of for an item for Once Upon a Broken Heart just because, uh, oh, just because this is more, it's more obvious. It's more obvious what it is. It is really flipping heavy. Uh, it's just a sketch pad. It's, it's well, kind of. It's, it's got dot pages in it. So it's really hard to see them. They're very light. But it's got dot pages in it. That's all it is. There's nothing else really about it other than the front. So I'm, I mean, I'm gonna use it as a notebook. I think it's nice. It has a little thing to keep it closed and you can even put your pen in here. So it's nice. It's just another notebook, but I like it. <laughs> All right, so we are down to the book, and the book is After the Forest by Kel Woods. This seems B formatted. I do have a B format book right next to me, so let me check. Okay, so here is a 100% B formatted book, and yeah, so this is a B format book. I actually you know I just talked about <laughs> the squared off edges having a weird size, 
but I love B formatted books. I don't know what it is about them. They just feel so like cute and petite and they're always light. Like this book is thick, but it feels so light and I don't know what it is about them. But anyway, here is After the Forest. I like it. I don't know anything about this book, so I'm not like really excited about it. Uh, but it is pretty and the gold foiling is very nice. I guess it's more like an orangey foiling. There is the side. This is really is a chunky book. And I don't know if it's chunky because it's B-formatted or it's like legitimately chunky. Here is the back. Very pretty. And then we have green on the top, green on there, and then we have really pretty uh, stenciled edges. I, I, I know some are digital, some are stenciled. For me, they're interchangeable and I know they're not interchangeable, but that's how I say it. So that's that. That's very nice. And then when we open it up, oh my goodness. <laughs> I... I'm very happy with Under the Dust Jacket. <laughs> we have some very interesting Under the Dust Jacket things going on. More of that orange foiling. And then it says something on there. I feel like you're not really supposed to be able to read it that well. So I'm not going to try because it definitely seems like I would not be able to read it. And then there is the back. Kind of supposed to look like an old leather journal. I love that. That was very cool. And then my favorite, which is Under the Cover. This is the type of artwork I absolutely love. I feel like I like more rough sketched or cartoony looking things or not cartoony but like this is a little cartoony but like anime style and I don't know I don't know exactly what I like but I do love this I think this is so cute I love the style of artwork it is adorable oh it's so cute so I'm very happy with that and then I don't see anything signed which is interesting we do have an author letter inside which is nice yeah I don't think I don't actually see anything signed which is they don't often do unsigned things and then we have the back artwork which is also really cute I don't think he fits very well into it um I don't like his design but I like everything else it's very cute it's very cute this seems like a very cute book so I'm very excited about that. I don't know anything about what this is about. So let's talk about what the book is actually about. Ginger Honey Cinnamon Flower. 20 years after the witch in the gingerbread house, Greta and Hans are struggling to get by. Their father and stepmother are long dead. Hans is deeply in debt from gambling and the countryside lies in ruin. It's people starving in the aftermath of a brutal war. Greta has a secret though. The witch's grimoire secreted away and whispering in Greta's ear for the past two decades and the recipe inside that makes the best gingerbread you've ever tasted. As long as she can bake, Greta can keep her small family afloat. But in a village full of superstition, Greta and her mysteriously addictive gingerbread, not to mention the rumors about her childhood misadventures, are a source of gossip and suspicion. And now dark magic is returning to the woods and Greta's magic, magic she is still trying to understand, may be the only thing that can save her if it doesn't kill her first. Wow, this is not a romance. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is the first thing that comes up. <laughs> this is not a romance, which is kind of sad because I read like, I, I like when a fantasy has a romance, but it doesn't need it. I literally just talked about how Threads That Bind did not need a romance in it. So I feel like maybe that's the case with this, but I am a little disappointed that it didn't like, doesn't seem to have a romance in it, but it does seem cute. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna give it a shot. And I do like like how the book, so this is supposed to be the grimoire. I do like how the book looks like a grimoire. It's really cool. So I would say book-wise, oh yeah, I didn't say after every night. I don't, I don't know if I like the every night one. It's kind of freaky, but I still think it counts as, you know what, no, I really don't like that cover. <laughs> I really don't like that cover, it freaks me out. So I would say we're one, two, three, three for five. I think we're at three for five for, for me liking it, which is pretty good. I would have liked to really like the other two, but I'll take three for five, especially when I really like the Hurricane Wars and the Starling House. Really, really like those. So that is everything in the box. Let's look at these spoilers very quickly. The Nightfell Replica by Stacey McAvoy Kant. We have, yep, Nightfell from the Cruel Prince. Woodland Treasures Page Tabs by They Moth are from Bitterthorn. Domus Somnia Desk Pad by Christian Engelberth is Lost Tale of Flower Bride. Finding Dreams Notebook by Fez Inkwright, Once Upon a Broken Heart. And then the book has a redesigned cover, full color printing on the hardback by Chatty Nora, digitally printed edges and paper artwork by Loth Lennon and a bound in author letter. So it is not signed. Next month's theme is anti-hero. I believe this is the other Starling, uh, Starling house. So that makes sense. 
And the items are going to be the Murderbot Diaries, Gideon the Ninth, Nedalyn Bone, and the Stardust Thief. So very gothic feels, except for the Stardust Thief. That doesn't really, well, I guess Murderbot's not gothic either. I just saw Nedalyn Bone and said gothic. <laughs> okay, so that's exciting. I know a lot of those, so that's cool. And this month oh, will be the next collectible mug with the Rosie Thorne artwork on it. So that is everything in the Illumicrate box. I also liked that one. I think it's pretty good. Minus the stupid sword replica. <laughs> I know, I know, everyone loves those and I just don't. Anyway, that is all the unboxing that I have for you today. It was a lot, a lot going on. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys were excited that the Evernight just showed up. So we also got to do that one. That's pretty much all I got for you. I feel like I'm pretty excited about all the stuff I got minus the, really it was just the dark design that I was not excited about uh, the changes that were made. Cause I can deal with the scary one cause it is scary. <laughs> but I, I just not a fan of that dark descent one. but anyway that's all I have for you today I hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you thought about the boxes about the books if you've read any of them no spoilers but I do want to know what you thought about the books if I should move any of them up on my TBR the Starling House is high on my TBR I actually really want to read that next after what I'm currently reading which is for a last chance author vlog that's what I'm working on right now that should be done relatively soon so that's exciting and uh, yeah that's pretty much everything I got for you today so I hope you guys enjoyed it make sure to subscribe so don't miss any future unboxings. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it and make sure you comment down below. I always love hearing from you guys and I'll see you in the next video.